Hi students, can you believe it? This is our last video. So after learning everything you have learned about Wicca on this course and all the research you're going to be doing, of course, you need to start thinking about certain things. And for example, and you can buy a book of, of shadows and write everything on the book of shadows, but for example, you can write down honestly how you perceive people and how you treat them bec before becoming a witch. And um, what are some of the changes that um, that you're going to be doing because, um, you know, before maybe you were lumping people in categories, right? How do you, uh, you can you can talk about how you saw yourself and related to your parents or your siblings, friends and your teachers and how uh, you saw yourself um, with people that you disagree. But the most important thing um, to think about when becoming a weekend uh, after all the information you got gather is how the basic tenets of witchcraft and Wicca how they're gonna apply to your interactions with people and um, how you treat each of these people differently if you truly believe in them so remember that some of our tenets are all people have a spark of the divine within them and that our goddess, that our God, and thou includes everyone, including you. There is no one true way. So Wicca and witchcraft is only one valid path among many. We believe that words have power, and your magical self hears every word you say. And you are now how to, um, how you behave and how you think. And you cannot be a victim and a witch at the same time. I think the goddess knew what she was doing once she created each and every one or and everything or every person and you have to be responsible for every thought they have um, and, and, and you have and what actions to take so you might find that um, life is a spiral and um, and you might not be the same person when you begin your journey uh, you might be reading and and especially if you start doing shadow work on the second year, for example, um, the main point is that we're all connected. And if you do something nice for someone else, this will come back to you threefold. So let's turn about how you feel about yourself and if you're comfortable in your own skin. If then once you say or you start accepting some of these principles, then you become a witch, how you're going to be confident and center around people. Because remember, one of the things you're going to encounter is resistance. And also, they're going to be questioning you. So um, they're going to be asking you, uh, so why that? Why only, uh, you know, why not one God only, you know? And like I said, there's some witches that only follow one God, right? Or the God. So you have to... Um, Oh, you're gonna, they're gonna say things like, oh, you're not a good witch because you don't do this, you don't do that. And so a lot of our work is to educate people. And um, this is gonna make you feel uncomfortable. Um, and sometimes being uncomfortable is fine. And if they ask you something, you say, I don't know, I'm still learning. You can find the answer and come back to that person and, hey, this is what I find out about it, you know? So, uh, you you have to think they're gonna have opinions of you and um, who you are now some of them may even think that you're not the same person and will talk how to tell your uh, family or your friends that you are weakened but um, I think the goddess and the old gods like you just fine and expect you to be constantly improving yourself and if you want to change and you have found the right path um, because it's true that the goddess changes everything she touches. If you have achieved perfect, perfection and you don't want to change or run any way, you might need to find another path because I think that being a Wiccan is a constant improvement. So, once you have become a witch, you may feel like spreading the word about this cool path that you found. And I will urge you to be careful and a lot of caution. So the average person still thinks that green skin and warty no noses and evil spells when they hear the word witch. Um, 
I used to sell soap at uh, flea markets and carnivals sometimes, and um, and I have been called, uh, oh, that's a witchy scent, or oh, that's a witch soap, and I'm not going to buy from you, things like that. So people uh, tend to be very opinionated, and uh, most, of the, most of it is ignorance, of course, they don't know, so you have to, uh, you might have to educate them. So even the word weekend is misunderstood, and um, life can get quite complicated if you're not careful, and so consider it carefully before telling the world that you're a witch. Most um, people out there, or the majority, I'll say 50-50, right, is going to be uh, Christian, or the religions are similar to that, and um, there are some people that are extremely fanatic, so... Here's my first piece of advice. Choose whether to be in the broom closet or out of it. So halfway out ra rarely works. So you have to be either in or out. Um, sometimes you can be um, in with your family and don't share that with the rest of the world. And I'm not saying by any means that you have to be embarrassed or scared about it. I'm just trying to... Uh, give you a good piece of advice because people will take will take decisions um, if they find out that you're a weekend they might take decisions like for example they might break a friendship but they won't tell you why or you might you lose your job and you won't know why um, or you might be harassed at work and you won't know why so things like that um, so you can be in the broom closet except with immediate family and coven mates or completely out. So being in the broom closet is a lot of hard work and you need to come up with creative answers to some questions. So let's take a look at some of these questions that they might ask. So if you practice at home and maybe travel to pagan uh, festivals and someone asks you what you're planning to do for the weekend, you can always say you're going camping with friends, for example. So the true, as far as it goes, and avoids the whole cliche, which I hate this cliche, but pagans dancing naked around the bonfire image. Uh, I don't know how many times I have been asked about going uh, sky clad or like uh, you guys dance naked or... Uh. So um, somebody might ask you, what church do you go to? So I, I wouldn't lie because that's really bad for your karma and your magic because words have power, remember that and your magical self hears every word you say but you need a response already that's true as far as it goes but it won't get you in trouble maybe so for example my spirituality has always been a very personal and private thing and and that cuts off some questions right so if the question is broader you answer can well as to what is your religion you can say i found that most religions have something valuable to teach or study several different ones which is probably true, since much of Wicca is based on so many other sources. Um, if they really get in your face, and this happens a lot at the beginning, I found the discussion religion or politics can lead to arguments to avoid those topics or conversation. And um, you can change also the subject, well, so how are your kids doing, etc. An even broader question and sometimes kind of difficult to answer is what do you believe? And a great answer that is absolutely true and rarely offends anyone is, I believe that all people have a spark of divine in them, and I try to honor that in my daily life. So half, halfway out means your family knows, and I will definitely tell your family, even if it's a little awkward at first, um, because if not, it, it gets really sticky, and you don't want to be... Um, like I said, lying or, or making things up. It's not good for you. It's not good for anybody. Um, um, what else? Um, well, even if you are out of the broom closet, having answers at the tip of your tongue is a good idea, at, at least at the beginning, until you get more familiar with the history, the rituals, the... Um, everything that it is to be like the year in a day, right? The first year. So, you don't have to introduce yourself as a witch to everyone you meet. I don't. And um, 
I normally only share with people that I feel comfortable and probably after uh, a year or so of friendship. And if I see that they are open-minded about, you know, liberal about certain things. If people ask, you answer honestly, no matter who they are, or what reason they might be asking. And um, because the more of us who are open and educated with those that we meet, the safer the all of us are. This is the truth. If you decide to be totally out, have some short, quick answers and be ready for some questions. And uh, they are sure to follow up with your declaration or I am a witch or I am Wiccan. Sometimes I will say I am pagan because that way um, the word pagan for some reason doesn't have that bad connotation as um, that you can find if you say I am a Wiccan or I am a witch, which they most people relate to something that is not holy or evil or something like that. Now, if you are staying inside of the room or in the room closet, um, this is a m more serious thing because it concerns your physical safety, your relationship with your children and your job. Um, so I can tell you real fast about an experience I have um, I was Catholic for uh, 20, 30 some years actually, and I um, studied being an herbalist, I got my degrees in herbalism and mass massage and chemistry and all those things, and I started researching and somehow found my way into Wicca, and then I took courses, um, and I, I wasn't telling anybody yet that I was a witch, but um, after two or three years of already practicing and, um, you know, and I started telling people, especially my family, I tell my family, um, and nobody really liked it. Um, at the beginning, for a few months, they were kind of like, um, I even hear like, maybe she's not right in the head, you know, all those kind of comments, like, what is she thinking, you know, um, but one of the things that, um, after I think I, I was already a weekend for five years that really hurt my feelings was that uh, there was um, my daughter had a friend and in a school and the mom is one of the Christian fanatics and she's not a bad person um, but she's like a really Christian fanatic and um, I guess my daughter told her I was a weekend and so immediately, first they they, they began uh, this campaign with my child. First they uh, they began to kind of hate on my child and uh, shun my child. And um, I, we even heard a video that they recorded saying, um, which, which the girls took, you know, when they were little. They were probably about, I'm thinking, eight to ten years. Um, that, that she was evil and she was evil spawn and things like that and so that really hurt my child and for two or three years we didn't talk with them and then she tried to um, after a few years and my daughter is already by this time 12 years old I found out that she had taken she had been taking my daughter to mass to Christian mass for almost three years and nobody in my family was telling me they were keeping a secret for me now I'm going to tell you something. I told my daughter, I bought her a Bible because I was Catholic too and I I love the teachings of Jesus and I have nothing against to say about that. But what really hurt me was that they did not give me the chance to uh, for my daughter to explore other faiths, that being Wiccan or Buddhist or Muslim or whatever uh, other religion that she wanted to explore. Because I think uh, like finding yourself is about exploration, and um, and um, but anyway, so I bought my daughter Bible night, and and I told her, you know, if you want to go to church, you go to church, but I it just the way they went, it was so things like that. My point, things like that can happen to you also, so you have to be um, very careful, especially around the Bible Belt. Um, it will be different if you live in San Francisco, Minneapolis, than if you live in the Bible Belt, for example. So some parts of the country might require good thick walls around your broom closet. Now, I, 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 I haven't found this um, 
kind of prejudice in in um, international waters or international like Europe and I haven't found that kind of prejudice but um, here um, in the United States you might have some prejudice against you just like gay people or transgender might find uh, prejudice against them so progress is slow in some regions and um, no one can blame you for wanting to keep yourself and your family safe um, like I said, children have been taken away, jobs have been lost, and people have been physically attacked because they emerged from the broom closet, voluntarily or involuntarily. And um, sometimes you might have to fight for custody of your kids or fighting for discrimination should at work because you are a witch, and, uh, uh, and, and a witch is no one's idea of a good hobby. And uh, if you must live in an intolerant place, go deep. If you must, for your sanity, be a public witch, move to a more hospital environment. There are lots of them. So, as I know, for those who already are out of the broom closet, please respect the decisions made by those who are not ready to come out yet. They have valid reasons for staying quiet about their path, and it is never up to you to out them out before they're ready. So remember, one of the worst things a witch can do is betray another witch's privacy. Now, telling your family and friends can be tough, but I think that family and friends, even though they might look disappointed at first, or they might question your motives, or they might say things like, you join a cult, what? You know, things like that, that are based out of ignorance and, and not knowing, not being educated on the subject. I think if you have a talk with them, everything will go fine. Um, so, telling your family and others, however, can be traumatic. And, well, let's, let's address a little bit about whether or not to tell your mother and your father, your children and your spouse, your co-workers and your best friend. So, the first question is, do they have a need to know? If they don't, and you don't know their religious preferences, then you probably don't have to tell them either the words or by the jewelry you wear. The second is, what legal or other power do they have over you? And this is a very important question. Are you a minor? If so, your parents have legal authority over you until you are 18. Whether you tell them depends on your relationship with them and what their beliefs are. So only you can answer this question. Is it safe to tell my parents or should I hold on until I am 18? If it's simply not safe physically, emotionally, financially, or otherwise, don't push it. The truth is, you can be a witch and you don't have to tell anybody. That's hard to hear, but it might be the only the wise choice. Keep reading and practicing in private and wait. On the other hand, if your parents are pretty open-minded, there are good ways and bad ways to tell them you're a witch. Blarting out mom, dad, and a witch at the dinner table isn't probably the best approach. Take a more uh, circuitous route. So talk about your belief in the sacredness of the earth, nature, the importance of living an ethical life, you know, view that the creator had many names and faces through human history. Um, this is why research and knowing and being educated and possibly taking courses for at least a year and a day is important. A third question is, if your parent could coming out put your children in jeopardy, if your spouse doesn't know of your spiritual inclinations and wouldn't be supported, then your marriage may have deeper problems than whether you are a witch. And that, that was my, uh, my case. Um, I was married to somebody that was a different uh, religion. It was Episcopalian. I was Catholic, and when I came out and said it, um, he was not supportive, and um, and it started to get uh, physical imbalance. So I would recommend that um, if you have that problem, just keep it to yourself, because there's some people, and no matter how much you tell them and how much you show them that you're still the same person, they're going to believe that, um, that something has changed. Um if the marriage has already fallen apart and there's a question of custody, you will have to weigh the possible cost of telling your ex. And staying in the closet may be the best and only answer. Another factor is the ages of your children. 
Family conflict or separation can be more traumatic for little ones than almost grown teenagers. And also remember that um, a lot of the uh, Christian and non-pagan religions, um, especially if your child has a different religion that you have, um, if they go to like, let's say Sunday church, um, you know, study Bible, anything like that, uh, kids are normally told that witches are bad. So if they're five or six years old and somebody tells them, witches are bad and you tell them you're a witch then your child is going to be confused because they don't have the ability yet to they just to come by association and they don't have the ability to understand um, the differences in religion so obviously it's not the same thing to tell a child that you're a witch when you're when when they're five or four or even two right than tell a teenager so you just have to be careful and um, educate them now um because witches are very rare, you still have to become the only expert on witchcraft. And if you're planning to wear a pentagram in public or declare to the world that you're a witch, be prepared for questions and have answers ready. This is a part of being confident in your own skin. Um, I have plenty of people that um, they call me the hippie or the crystal lady or something like that. And, and I think that's funny. Um, but I have people telling me, you're not a witch, you're not good, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, um, you know, and that, that um, I have to be honest, it hurts, it hurts my feelings because um, of ignorance, and I try to, if you try to educate them like I have, sometimes they just don't want to hear it because they have their own uh, mindset, and sometimes um, arguing or talking about it um, might not change, you know, some, they're going to stay in their position. So don't try too hard either to justify yourself and your motives. You are who you are and you have to bring your light out so, so you can enjoy being you, right? So it's a, a lot about confidence. And Wicca is also about showing the world that you are proud to be a Wiccan. And um, so some of the questions that you get is um, if you were in a pentagram, is that the start of David? I didn't know you were Jewish. No, it's not. That's your answer. And I'm not. It's a pentagram, an ancient symbol of protection and balance. Some people say, I thought a pentagram was a symbol of devil worship. The upside down pentagram has been used that way, like an upside down crucifix. But this one is right side up. For me, it's a symbol of Wicca. So why is Wicca? Wicca is based on the ancient religions of Europe mostly. It's a religion that honors the earth as sacred and we celebrate nature and the seasons of the year. Is Wicca actually a religion? I thought it was a cult. Yes, it's a real religion recognized by the federal government and everything. Do you believe in God? They asked me this uh, even as a doctor of natural um, medicine. I have been asked these kind of questions. And I had to answer, yes, I do believe in God, but also in the equal feminine energy in the universe that we call goddess. Some people say this a lot, so be prepared. But there's just one God. Maybe so, but the divine has both masculine and feminine sides, and we often think of them as two divine persons, God and goddess. Do you believe in Jesus? This one also. I believe he was very loving and wise teacher, but I don't worship him. Myself, I also do worship Jesus, but uh, there's um, a more of the Jewish weekend tradition, whether other witches might be more pagan tradition, so they don't, um, they, they might hold him as a teacher, and that's it. And, well, do you believe in evil or the devil? I believe that people can do evil things, but I don't believe in all evil entities, so I don't believe in the devil. Do you follow the Ten Commandments? And you can say, um, I have, you have no problem with the Ten Commandments, but you follow the Wiccan Rede, and the Wiccan Rede is very similar to the Ten Commandments, in my opinion, it's pretty much the same. But um, if somebody asks, what do you mean when it comes back to you? Oh, what comes around goes around, or what goes around comes around. But you so you should weep. Do you go to church services? We celebrate seasonal holidays and the phases of the moon. 
the faces on the moon, that sounds like witchcraft. But that's another name for it. But it is nothing like movie witchcraft or fantasy books. Remember that sometimes they're going to be asking you a huge amount of questions going around and around and around until they prove the point that witchcraft is evil. If you see that this happens, get out of the conversation and walk away. Um, also, you'll be asked about spells and magic. And sometimes they will be joking, but um, because they will try to find information and they feel awkward around you to ask you these questions. So do you like magic, like put spells on people and stuff? As you can see, they always try to turn questions into a negative. No, as I said, I expect everything I do to come back to me, so why would I put any spell on anyone? Besides, that would be interfering with their free will, and that's not right. Could you show me some magic right now? And children might ask you something like that. So, just one trick. Uh, a lot of people try to be smart butts, right? Our magic isn't like a stage tricks. It's serious stuff, more like prayer. And we don't perform magic on demand. But if you want to learn about it, I can recommend a good book. I hope that you know when to stand on your rights. I hope that you uh, will enjoy the course and that you have learned a lot. Remember that maybe many sick and a few may find touching magic wielding power that witchcraft feeds the heart and mind and a witch at every hour. Blessed be and thank you for taking this course. Have a great one.